This show is part of the RetroZap.com podcast network. And welcome everybody to episode 76 of the Animaniacast. Excuse us, what was that last line? Um, you singed my toga? No, no, the line before that. My mean old dad, Zeus? No, before that. Go away, you annoy me. That's it, that's our cue. And welcome once again to the Animaniacast. We are the only podcast out there that's dedicated to the animated television series, Animaniacs. And here we explore the series episode by episode. We explore all the cultural references and gags that we can find. And uh, in the end, we give each episode a Water Tower rating. I am Joey, and joining me once again is my brother Nathan. Ooh, Technicolor. (laughs) And joining us across the country is Kelly. Me. Come on, Kelly. Let's try. I'm gonna do this with a little more enthusiasm. Come on. I'm just not feeling it today. Ah, uh, okay. You just want to forget this podcast? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, good night, everybody. Good night. This podcast is not endorsed by Warner Brothers or Amblin Entertainment and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Animaniacs, the Warner Brothers logo, all names, pictures, and sounds of the Animaniacs characters or any other Animaniacs related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Warner Brothers, Amblin Entertainment, or their respective trademark and copyright holders. <laughs> oh, wait, we're doing everything else? We're doing everything else. Uh, we're back. We're back. Deleted all the show notes. Oh, and, Nathan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'll rewrite it. I'll give them fast. Okay, good. Thank you, Nathan. Get writing. Well, we're just here. We, <laughs> today, <laughs> welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about episode 76 of Animaniacs, which, of course, includes the segments Gimme the Works, Buttons and Owls, and Hercules Unwound. So tell me, uh, guys, and uh, if someone were to ask you in a few words, what do you thought about this episode? What would you tell them? Uh, Nathan. Um, it's not your typical Animaniacs episode, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and Kelly, what about you? I thought there were a lot of references in it. <laughs> there were. Uh, but yeah, it was definitely, like Nathan said, it's definitely different. Um, and it's... No, no different. Only different in your mind. <laughs> you must unlearn <laughs> what you have learned. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> uh... I, I that see I <laughs> I would have never thought the word different would have would have uh, pulled a Yoda quote out of Kelly but I I should oh, have, please. I it, should have it, known better. Yeah, there's I have like this whole list of like trigger words. <laughs> 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 it it drives people crazy. <laughs> a lot of a lot of the the ones that I end up doing are from Indiana Jones though. <laughs> that happens to me as well too, especially like I don't know. Like well I hate to say it, but the one that probably gets the most triggered for me is from Crystal Skull. Since I'm a teacher, my wife and I usually quote that stupid line from Shia LaBeouf where he goes, you're a teacher? And he goes, part time. <laughs> but yeah. My favorite line from Crystal Skull was when they they're talking about how he met Pancho Villa and um, oh, he yes. catch And because not a lot of people know this, but that was a reference to Mexico now. 1916, which was the second half of the pilot episode of The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Starring, of course... Sean Patrick Flannery. That's right. And I will be getting... <laughs> I will get a chance to um, at least see Sean Patrick Flannery at the upcoming uh, Phoenix uh, Comic Con, or Phoenix... What do they call it? Comic Fest this year. Um, and, uh, yes, so I will be there covering... The con for RetroZap and the Animaniacast. So if you see me over there, folks, um, don't throw anything at me. 
And uh, <laughs> <laughs> chances are, if you see me, I'll be wearing an Animaniacast shirt or a Retro Zap shirt. And uh, I was going to say, are you going to wear something identifiable? Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I will be. I will be. And if, by the way, here's a quick plug. I believe we're scheduled right now to host a panel on Friday, May 25th at 1030 a.m. The location, I don't know. But uh, I'll be hosting a Star Wars panel along with uh, my buddies uh, Jason from The Wampa's Lair and Kyle from Star Wars The Saga Continues. And we're going to be talking about uh, the Solo movie, which would have just been released earlier that, like, within 24 hours of our podcast, <laughs> or our, our panel, I should say. And uh, we're going to talk about the future of Star Wars. So there you go. There's your little quick plug for upcoming stuff. So Phoenix Comic, Fe- Comic Fest should be a great time. Um, it always is. I'll be there for at least two or three days. Nathan was there last year. You had a lot of fun with me. And yeah, it was yeah. very fun. Yeah, good times. <laughs> and yes, go got to go see Sean Patrick Flannery and Tim That'd Curry. That'd be awesome. And the and the voice of Belle is going to be over there too. She'll be over there. And oh, is Tim Curry going to be there? Yeah, Tim Curry will be there. Oh and, my uh, gosh! And let's I, see. Yeah, I love him and Annie. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I mean, was I he the villain? And Annie? Yes. Yeah, he he was Miss Hannigan's brother. He's always the villain. I, <laughs> I just, I love that movie so much. The original, or, you know, the, the one from the 80s. But, I mean, I know he's done a million other things. He was actually in a, a Spielberg production, um, Earth 2, hmm. that uh, debuted the, the year after Sequest did. It only lasted a season, but but I have it on DVD, of course. So Was he, he was the also, villain? In yeah, that? yeah, he's kind of the villain. <laughs> I think I think at first he was like pretending not to be, and then he was. And but yeah, he's usually he's a great villain. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> but, I think um, he I think he played in the Broadway version of Spam a lot. I believe he played King Arthur, and that might have been oh, one wow. of the only times he may have not played a villain. Um, yeah, although depending on Clue. What, yeah, I was going to say depending on what version of Clue you watch, right? I mean, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so he may not be the villain all the time. It's, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, oh yeah, and 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 the best Batman ever is going to be there. Val Kilmer, he's going to be Woo! there. Which re- which reminds me, I saw an autograph picture. You're, you're being sarcastic, right? No, no, I'm totally being sarcastic. But I oh, I went I to them. I went to a I went to a used bookstore a few years ago here in Tucson, uh, Bookman's, and I looked at like they had a random thing. It was a picture of Val Kilmer as Batman, and guess who signed it. It says Adam West. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> it was either, I don't know if it was a fake autograph or what, but I didn't buy it. It was pretty cheap. I should have bought it because it was just so weird, but um, I didn't. Yeah, it's not something you see every day. <laughs> anyway, uh, so let's go. Hey, guys, let's talk about Animaniacs. Let's, why not? Let's, <laughs> let's get into this one. Now that we've talked about everything else under the sun. Um, Nathan, tell us. Um, when did today's episode, episode 76 of Animaniacs, when did it first premiere? All right. So this episode premiered on October 21st of 1995, which was a Saturday. And uh, it was like one day after the release of Mallrats. Um, it was also the day after Sh- Shorty was released, which I said last week's episode was, which I lied. I said Ace Ventura 2. I messed up my show notes oh, i've been no. getting so many tweets about it oh, yeah oh, i know everyone's like just kidding yeah, uh, exactly <laughs> they're messaging I remember you when Django, FT. Came out. Django ft message <laughs> Django nathan FT. with all the incorrect stuff do it <laughs> um well this one's a good fact uh columbia 18 launched a day before this you all remember when that happened uh or when mario Tremblay became the 22nd nhl ho- coach of the montreal canadians What's what's right? the what's the Columbia fourteen? What's that? That's just a it's just like a satellite. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> like I'm um... pretty sure something something unimportant. Uh, there was also four <laughs> days before Cliff Singer, Cliff Richard, the singer, uh, became the first rock and roll star to become knighted. So, so really, what you're saying it. is nothing happened. Nothing happened, <laughs> as far as I can tell. I did research, and I was like, oh shoot. I messed up last week, so I couldn't get over that. So, well, we'll do it. We'll, <laughs> well, we'll just say that we'll just, uh, you know, say that uh, East Ventura Two came out this weekend, and then we'll, yeah, we'll flip okay. it in, in our universe. 
anyway. Is it is it too late to edit this week? Can you take that <laughs> soundbite and put it in last week's episode? And then... <laughs> uh, yeah. That sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> but it sounds like it does sound like something that Nathan would, would drive Nathan up the wall, though. So I do, <laughs> I do know. <laughs> well, it's not my it's because the episodes got mixed up and I just was looking at the dates and I was like, October 21st comes before November 11th. So obviously this date comes first and there's a uh, that's what messed up the show. Now. That's right, because the whole Veterans Day thing it got pushed yeah, off. Yeah, but and... I don't want to blame the veterans, so I'm not <laughs> blaming them. Yes, let's not blame the veterans. <laughs> okay, well, let's go ahead and get into our episode discussion. First of all, before we do, we had a cool new variable verse this uh, this time. It was Tarzan and Janie. Tarzan and Janie. It was cool. This was a few you know years before, I believe, the Disney Tarzan movie. But um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I thought it was a cute little variable verse. It was Dot, of course, and being held in Tarzan's arms. I guess it kind of fits with the theme a little bit, perhaps, because Hercules is strong like Tarzan, and there's a Wizard well, of Oz Hercules parody. Hercules is a Disney movie that's not been made yet, and Tarzan is a Disney movie that hasn't been made there yet. There we go. Oh, okay, there was the <laughs> connection. They knew. They knew. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and get into our first uh, very quick segment here. It's hardly even a, a cartoon. It's called Give Me the Works. Hello, genius people. Yako Warner here. The only show we listen to in the Water Tower is the Animated Cast. I bet you can't guess why. Good night, everybody. And Give Me the Works was written by Peter Hastings, and it was directed by Otto Payton. And basically what happens in this is, uh, well... The Warners are going to go get a hot dog from a very mean hot dog vendor. And he's, of course, yelling at them. And he says, oh, this is our new special friend. But Dot, I don't know. She hadn't had enough B vitamins that day or maybe not enough sleep. No coffee. No coffee. (laughs) No, she didn't drink her coffee that morning. And she just was not into it. And they just called it off. Our new special friend. Yeah. (sighs) Hey, Dot. How about a little enthusiasm here? Nah, I'm just not into it today. Uh, you want to forget this cartoon? Sure, let's go. Hey, hey, come back! Hey, this cartoon is my big break! Hey! And all they leave is that actor who was playing the <laughs> the hot dog cart guy alone, and that was his big break to be an Animaniacs, but... Too bad they shut down production and uh, lights go off and he puts his must uh, mustache and I think in the mustard and it kind of sinks into it, which is a very interesting shot. <laughs> he decided to take mm-hmm. on it. Um, I don't know. That's that's it. What do you guys think about this first cartoon? Uh, Nathan, let's start with you. Um, I thought it was interesting. I was like, even as it started, I was like, oh, this kind of trope again. Like, and I I, I, I didn't feel the energy so i'm I'm glad they stopped it when they did i guess <laughs> <laughs> and kelly what about you i thought it was funny it was completely unexpected <laughs> yeah it was it i was kind of looking forward to it in a way like okay let's do one of these again and then they just didn't i wonder if the, how much commentary this was from the actual writers themselves about this formula mm-hmm. but, I don't know. I, I <laughs> it was definitely you know talk about breaking the fourth wall. This one was just like busting it down and stepping on it. And <laughs> we're just like we're done. Um, so that was kind of a hint of how this episode was going to go, I guess, in a way. <laughs> Subverting expectations. Yes, and I did feel sorry for that guy. You know, he. You know, I was I wonder what whatever happened to that that uh, cartoon actor. Out there somewhere in Burbank trying to get a Probably job. Probably did an day. episode of Law and Order or something. Is <laughs> is character actor number two in the back? Like <laughs> he just he would play like the guy who would like walk in the lineup and just like nope, not him. And that would be his bum, only. Bum. Yeah. Bum, bum. <laughs> um. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and get to our next. It's a longer cartoon, that's for sure, and it's called Buttons and Owls. And Buttons and Owls was written by Peter Hastings, and it was directed by Otto Payton and Barry Caldwell. And 
Nathan, tell us what happens here in this Mindy and Buttons cartoon, Buttons in Owls. Okay, well, all you Wizard of Oz fans, uh, we have a little prequel for you, I guess. (laughs) I think it is. Uh, (laughs) So uh, Toto's uh, uh, in a little basket getting moved or something, and he he runs to the neighbor's house, which uh, is the house of Mindy and Buttons. And uh, Mindy loves Toto because it's so much fun to play with, and she chases him around. Uh, Unfortunately, there's a tornado that comes by and lifts up the whole house with Mindy and Buttons and Toto inside. And uh, Buttons, of course, is trying to save Mindy the whole time. And it lands in Oz right on top of Buttons, who uh, gets crushed by the house, just like the witch in the Wizard of Oz movie that we all know. And uh, anyways, uh, the the beginning's all like uh, sepia-toned, and then they land in Oz, and it's all color technicolored, just like in the movie (laughs) Wizard of Oz. Uh, There's also other uh, things that are similar to the movie Wizard of Oz because they go down a a yellowish brick road. It's not quite yellow. Um, It's ochre. Is that what it is? I think that's what they said, yeah. Okay. Uh, So, yeah, they go down. um, they uh, uh, They meet a scarecrow. They meet a a tin man. They meet a lion who's, (laughs) he's kind of a coward, but uh, not to when (laughs) Buttons meets him. Anyways, then they go all the way to to the Oz. This is the city of Oz. Uh, Mindy is able to get inside by asking uh, why a bunch to the doorman. Uh, Then she meets the powerful wizard, which, hey, spoiler, is the brain. Uh, So then they jump into the little uh, wicker basket, which is... uh, for the hot air balloon and it takes them all the way back to their own uh, city. And uh, there we go. That's uh, basically the end. Uh, Buttons gets yelled at for being mean to Toto. And that's, that's everything. There we go. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, like Nathan said, the biggest reference was of course the 1939 film, not gone with the wind Kelly, but wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> they had the same director. You're kidding me. The wizard of Oz and, and, the uh, Gone well, with the Wind yeah, directed Ga- the same person. Gone with the Wind actually had three directors, um, but, but Victor Fleming was one of them, and Victor Fleming directed The Wizard of Oz. That is crazy. I had no idea. I know they were like the two competing films that year for like Best Picture or something. I think right. Yep. Uh, anyway, well, anyway, um, this was. I like how Nathan you said this was like a prequel because it really was kind of like a prequel just to the events. It was kind of like. Mm-hmm. It was like the one Wizard of Oz gets kicked out, and then the the other one gets put in, so that you know the brain got brushed back to Kansas or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I assume that Doorman is like the wiz- like he's he turns into the wizard, right? Like that's the same Doorman. Like, doesn't the wizard play the Doorman? And, yes, in the movie. I can- there you go. So he's yeah. probably just like, oh, the hey, look at all this stuff I can play with and everything. And- you know, wow. And the witches are all still there. They don't. They don't attack any of the witches, so it doesn't doesn't actually hurt any of the original plot to the story. So yeah, I never uh, thought of it that way. There you go, Nathan. You filled in a plot hole of exactly why that doorman is the same guy who plays the wizard. It's, now he has to play <laughs> two different parts in the Land of Oz. <laughs> who rang that bell? Hi, Mister Doorman. What you doing? I'm guarding the door and you can't come in. Not no way, not no how. Why? Because I'm the boss of these things. Why? Because that's my job. Why? Because, uh... Oh, all right, come on in. Okay, I love you, bye-bye. <laughs> uh, there we go. After uh, talking with uh, Charles M. Howell and having hooked on a ceiling in my head, I just, uh, you know, hearing Rob Paulson doing that doorman voice again was <laughs> funny yeah that made me think of it too <laughs> let me in let me in nobody gets in to see the wizard not nobody not know how but i'm michelangelo <clears throat> the witch is michelangelo well now that's a ceiling of a different color i guess really the only uh, real reference to some stuff was uh kind of like some cartoonish references there was a wily e. coyote uh, flying around in his, I think it was like a Batman suit in that original Roadrunner coyote, you know, and coyote cartoon. Mm-hmm. He's caught up in the, in the tornado at the very beginning. Um, there's a lot of cows in the, in the twister, but this was before the movie twister. There used to be, it seemed like around the mid to late nineties, 
there was cows and twisters on every single pop culture joke ever. Um, that movie Twister was such a, such a hit that I never really saw all the way through because the movie kind of bored me. But Ahem. do you know who one of the executive producers of Twister was? Uh, could it be Steven Spielberg? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> oh, so maybe... I thought it was Kelly. So, then, so do you want to rephrase what you just said? <laughs> well, maybe he saw this episode of Animaniacs and then he said, oh, that's that's it. Let's go for that cow in. Let me just double check on that real quick. Twister. When was Twister movie released? 1996. 1996. A 57% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. So, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> it was it was a fun movie. You remember it? I remember, remember it. The cow. Yep. Yeah, the cow got a big part. It was a, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that cow was everywhere. He, he went on a cross-country tour. They just had to blow him around the country, and he was there. Um, anyway, so there was the cow and the thing, and I guess there was a little bit of a cartoonish thing when uh, Buttons does his little snap to the to the cowardly lion and, you know, makes the cowardly lion not so cowardly. He s- scratches him up. That looked like a very I, – I couldn't place exactly which cartoon or cartoons it was referencing. Um you know, some people have said kind of a Tom and Jerry thing, and other people, I, to me, it just kind of looked like Looney Tunes ish kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, I, don't I can know. see that happening to Daffy Duck or something. Yeah, it looked like a Daffy Duck. Like I know I've seen a cartoon where like the, uh, a wild tiger or monster, or something, you know, like a cat, like a lion or a tiger, does swipe, 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 swipe and then chops them up into little, you know, pieces. But I just don't know what you know, listeners. I'm sure they have. A, we have you know cartoon experts it, in the crowd so they and there's can multiple cartoons that it happens in I'm yeah sure too, but. yeah but it definitely sounds like something that would happen to daffy or sylvester or, or you know tom from tom and jerry or something like that or all of them <laughs> well anyway um guys what were some of your favorite moments from this cartoon uh let's start with kelly what do you what were what did you like i liked how the color did change just like in the the movie the wizard of oz um you know when they're in Kansas or wherever they are, um, it's that sepia color, and then it goes to Technicolor, and they even refer to it as Technicolor. <laughs> um, and well, wait, no, don't they? Yeah, she does. She goes, mm-hmm. "Ooh, Technicolor." Ooh, Technicolor. Yeah, okay. this is the, probably the biggest word she ever says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I was like, "Who's who said it though?" But uh, yeah, I guess Mindy said it. I liked how they they really you know, caught the, the mood I, I, and feel of, of the wizard of Oz. You, you could definitely tell that they were referencing the film, you know, almost shot by shot in some instances, but they co- sort of made it their own because none of the, the lion and scarecrow and tin man, they, they didn't talk. They weren't characters. They were more like props in the, the cartoon. Uh, but it was really well done the way they, they paid tribute to the film. It really kind of felt like, they were like Mindy was just too early for the show to start or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like the, the scarecrow, it really, again, to go to that prequel idea, <laughs> it really kind of felt like the scarecrow, like, well, the scarecrow can't talk everything and do and the, and the tin man can't talk and everything right now because it's not time for this to happen, <laughs> you know? So instead mm-hmm. there'll just be obstacles that just fall on you or you run into things like that. I don't know. That that was weird. What Nathan, what, what do you or think? Dorothy's just, crazy maybe and just is hallucinating these and just talking to inanimate objects could be too just well, carrying them around everywhere she goes see now you're going to the return to oz theory right there i was about to say that i was like no she didn't know she was crazy and return to oz <laughs> have you ever seen that was, a, that was a george lucas produced film um which was freaky and scary and i liked it i man that movie was scary do you remember that movie at all nathan yeah, that's a freaky movie. The, oh, the monkeys, or the equivalent to the monkeys, were really weird. The wheelers, like bicycle people. The yeah, wheelers like, were terrifying. Ooh, the wheelers with heads on their top of their head or something, and then the place where like Ozma, I think it was, where the, all the heads were everywhere. And oh yeah, they all scream and oh, and uh, TikTok was cool. Um, oh yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> I uh, speaking of which. I talked to um, 
oh gosh, now I'm forgetting his name. He uh, is the puppeteer who did Admiral Akbar. Um, Tim Rose. Tim Rose. Tim Rose. He did Tim. Uh, he did uh, Admiral Akbar, and he also did Salacious Crumb. And I met him over at Star Wars Celebration, and we just started talking about puppets and Muppets and everything like that. Since he has worked with, uh, he's you know what he. He's done Muppets for many different Muppet movies. And he was talking about Return to Oz. And I guess he was still in a salacious crumb attitude because he said underneath TikTok's foot, he wrote on it something to ha 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 salacious was here or something like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Nathan, what do you like about the episode? Uh, I liked the animation in it. I thought that was pretty good. I like it. The button looked pretty cool in it. And then uh, I like that Pinky and the Brain were in it. It was just fun to see them uh, make a cameo. That was so. a laugh out loud moment right there for me. When I, I And I don't know why I didn't see that coming. I am the Brain. The great and powerful Brain. The brain looked like perfect with with that mm-hmm. uh, with that fire because of course the the original one has such a big head anyway that it made perfect mm-hmm. sense to put the green brain right there with all the smoke and everything around him. I just thought that was genius, just perfect. His brain is the genius. <laughs> is that what we're saying? Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> I just like that he probably built that. Thing. Like it's just, it's so cool because. He's a good. He's a good inventor. So exactly. He, We're going with the prequel that. idea again. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. It's it's a it's a very fun cartoon. I mean, there was little weird things in it that I still don't quite understand, like why the the witch of the east, or was it the witch of the north? That's what it was. The witch of the east gets you know killed in the original in the movie, but the witch of the mm-hmm. north in this has a her pink dress on and then her crown has like a merry go round or something like that attached to the top of her hat hat or it something. Might be a Beetlejuice reference. I think it's a similar hat to the oh, Beetlejuice. Oh yeah, it does kind of look like Beetlejuice that one little weird uh outfit that Beetlejuice does wear. Which again, mm-hmm. I don't I don't know why they would do that, but it does kind of look similar, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and move on to our last cartoon for today. This last segment here is called Hercules Unwound. And Hercules Unwound was written by John Luden and Nick Dubois. And it was directed, once again, by Adu Payton. And Kelly, tell us what happens here in Hercules Unwound. Hercules is a whiny little brat. (laughs) And his dad, Zeus, has given him some labors, I guess 12 labors, to work on. Which is based on the, the Greek myth. And he's whining about it and he's he's got such a a a very unexpected voice for hercules it's very i don't know like baby like i guess which sort of goes along with the whining and he doesn't want to do it and he's been asked to clean the aegean stables and and that's the one that the episode mostly focuses on and it's, it's gross and nasty and he doesn't want to do it. And he continues to whine about it. Um, Oh, but before that, the Warner siblings show up and (laughs) they, um, they start to antagonize him and, or or act like they're, you know, they're about to make him their new best friend, but then they lose interest in the episode and leave just like they did in the first segment. (laughs) Uh, Are you okay? Yeah. No. I don't know. I guess. I'm just not in the mood today. You want to just skip this cartoon? Yeah. Okay. See ya, pal. Hey, 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 wait! What about helping me with my chores? (laughs) That was unexpected, because, you know, okay, once, fine, but twice in an episode? That was very interesting. So, he, um... He goes and starts to work on the stables, and Medusa's there hanging out, and she's a caricature of, or, you know, I guess parody of uh, Joan Rivers. That's right, Pegasus. Dishwashing liquid. You're soaking in it. Okay, okay, so get this. Mercury's supposed to take me dancing, but he shows up late and says, Sorry, Medusa, but I just flew down from Olympus, and my feet are killing me. Oh, he is such a snake in the grass, which, of course, I like. 
then Pinky and the Brain show up, which is, again, totally out of left field because you don't expect to see them halfway through the episode. And they want to steal Zeus's thunder to take over the world. And Zeus gets mad at Hercules for not cleaning the stables, or at least not completing the task. So he hurls the thunderbolt at the stables, and then it bounces off and hits a, a dam and opens the dam, and water comes flooding through, cleans out the stables, are sparkling and shining. Yay, he completed his task. And um, But Pinky and the Brain happened to be on the thunderbolt when that happened. And so they end up being all beat up and battered and um, failure again. I'll teach that lazy bum to shirk his duties. I sense the pivotal moment of failure quickly approaches. Yeah, so they don't take over the world. They don't get, they don't get his bolt of lightning or anything like that. It was the the title itself, Hercules Unwound, is kind of based upon an actual Hercules film called Hercules Unchained, and um, I've seen that film. It was on Mystery Science Theater many times, or at least rerun many times. I think you can probably see it on Netflix or Pluto TV right now. Uh, it put me into the mind of Prometheus Unbound. Oh um, well, there's a lot of un, there's a lot of things happening to these Greek heroes back then. They're they're always getting unbound or unchained or whatever. Uh, but <laughs> but either way, it's it's um it's kind of a nice title right there, referencing a lot of those kind of old mythological movies of of the day. There was some a couple quick references to actually commercials of all things. I mean, you mentioned Kelly Joan Rivers. She mentions dishwashing liquid. You're soaking in it. And that's a reference to old Palm Olive dishwashing liquid commercials. And I actually watched one today. It was involves a woman going to a manicure, uh, you know, place. I think it was all the way back from 1981. It just came from a rummage sale, Madge. Oh, I was wondering where you got these hands. Oh, it's <laughs> dishwashing. What will I try? Everything. And use Palm Olive dishwashing liquid. It softens your hands while you do the dishes. You're soaking in it. In dishwashing liquid? <laughs> it's palm olive. And of course, she she is accidentally putting her hands into this dishwashing liquid at the nail salon. So apparently, it was a famous commercial. I was too young to remember this commercial. Yeah, I don't I don't remember that. But <laughs> but it sounds just like a commercial that would have come on when I was watching Days of Our Lives. Oh, totally, totally. And thank goodness they're they're phasing these kinds of commercials out these days where it's the you know the the house who watches commercials well that's very true (laughs) the other commercial the other reference i should say is to another commercial and that is to a taster's choice commercial and hercules and joan rivers or medusa (laughs) are drinking coffee at one point and hercules says come celebrate the moments (laughs) And that is very similar to the Taster's Choice commercial, uh, because at the end of each commercial, they would say, like, celebrate the moments of your life at each commercial. <laughs> General Foods International Coffees. I loved that waiter. Sean Luke. <laughs> oh, my I do remember that one. Yeah. Like, oh, I, I used to think that was really good coffee, too, until my mom told me. No, don't. I, I think I bought a, bought some of that for my mom once for like her birthday or Mother's Day. Oh, no. <laughs> I was thinking, well, this must be like all these women on these <laughs> on TV love drinking this stuff, but it's like hot cocoa. <laughs> it's like the equivalent of like mixing it up and it's yeah, instant coffee is gross. Oh, yeah. I've never had it. Hercules is taking a coffee break. Where's my lightning bolt? Zeus kind of looked like uh, Orson Welles of all people. It was kind of mm. sad that uh, Maurice LaMarche couldn't do a double. I guess it would have been too confusing if he did the voice mm-hmm. of Zeus and the brain, um, since it's essentially the same voice for Orson Welles. But that Zeus <laughs> looks so much like Orson Welles. It's 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 ridiculous. Uh, Nathan Kelly, what do you guys think? Uh, what were some of your favorite moments of this cartoon? Nathan, start. Uh, let's start with you. 
I, I just like the whole uh, the entrance of the Warners saying like, "Is that our is that our cue?" Like, no, no, that's it. That's not it. Like, you know, and then not until Hercules says, "Oh, you're bothering me." Like, there we go. That's our cue. <laughs> it's kind of cute. Um, and then uh, just. And then they come back at the end. So it, it is a nice, like, confusing thing of whether it's a, a Warner's or even a, a Pinky in the Brain episode. It's nice. And then they've, uh, they did a good job of throwing in a lot of Greek mythology just kind of randomly throughout. So it was kind of fun. Huh? What happened? You've cleaned the Aegean stables, Hercules. Well done. And as your reward, you are to marry the greatest goddess in all of Greece. Who? The goddess of love? The goddess of beauty? No, the goddess of cuteness. Aphrodite! And I did like Aphrodite. I think that was a very mm-hmm. good use of words right there. But yeah, you're right. But the, don't call her that and, or you'll die. That's true. You can, you can call her Dot. <laughs> you can call her Aphrodite, but don't call her Dottie or you die. There, there's a scene in the Lyceum. Which is sort of like, you know, the school. Mm-hmm. And the instructor is telling them to, I guess, refer to a textbook or something. And he, he's like, chapter X double I, because <laughs> everything's in Roman numerals. And I thought mm-hmm. that was. It was, I believe that's Aristotle. And of course, that's almost exactly the same design from how he looked in You Risk Your Life. Um, of course, this time he had much more of a, a, a funny Yiddish accent. The secret to Zeus's unlimited powers is his mighty lightning bolt. Got that, you little goofs? It was voiced by Maurice LaMarche. Oh, okay, there you go. He, uh, before, he all he said was, yes, and then, of course, gets <laughs> hit on the head. Um, but this time, he had a very funny voice. I really liked it. Did you guys notice the kids in the background that were kind of falling asleep during the lesson? And then the second time watching it, I was like, hey, there's, one of the kids is a cyclops. He only had he's, oh. a, he's a big fat kid and he's just sit, kind of sitting in the back and uh, yeah he only had one eye so that was kind of cool. I think I think Futurama has like uh, caused me not to even recognize Cyclopses anymore. <laughs> I don't see eyes. I'm yeah. I don't count eyes anymore. <laughs> You're very enlightened. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, overall, yeah, this was just a, a cartoon that really was unexpected. It went all over the place. Uh, it was uh, definitely different, and I kind of found, hate to say it, but I found Hercules' voice just a little too annoying. I know he's supposed to be annoying, but he's too annoying to me. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else you guys want to say about this uh, cartoon before we move on to our Water Tower rating? It may be more accurate than the Disney cartoon. I'm not <laughs> the, <laughs> for Hercules. <laughs> Well, when it comes to mythology, it was all fake anyway, so who cares, right? I mean, just make it up. Right. Well, <laughs> you can't prove it was fake, well, I that's guess. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get to our Water Tower rating, there's one more little short thing to talk about, and that, of course, is the return of the Wheel of Morality. It's that time again. To explore Rush Limbaugh? To share a pie with Newt Gingrich? No, it's time to learn the day's lesson. And in this Wheel of Morality, the moral is to be or not to be, that is the pencil. And I thought that was a very funny um, little joke right there. A 2B pencil would be like a number 2 bold, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. <laughs> mm, but, <something>. Yeah. <laughs> but you know these animators, in, you know, they, they love their pencils. It's... it's <laughs> See why this is on the top of their head. Tom Ruger posted a picture of a pencil that he found on on his Facebook page a few weeks ago. And it was just funny to watch all these different uh, artists talking about pencils (laughs) in the comment section. I thought it was very funny. That's all I thought about when I saw this moral. Uh, What did you guys think of today's moral? It was cute. Talking about pencils makes me think of John Wick. (laughs) <laughs> which I have not seen that either. I need to see both what? of those two movies. I need to see John Wick 1 and 2. I need to see both of them. So good. Yeah. Makes me think of uh, the, uh, Dark Knight. Why? Oh, because it's the, the trick of the pencil. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm like, when did, I just think of when does Batman do, deal with a pencil? Oh, yeah, the Joker did. Okay. <laughs> Okay. And I still have Val Kilmer in my head, too. So that's always a problem <laughs> <laughs> when I'm talking about Batman. 
Uh, see, I'm in the mid nineties, uh, of Batman right now with Val Kilmer in my head. So that's the problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and get t- over to our water tower rating. Well, what do you guys think out of five water towers? How many water towers would you give today's episode? Uh, Kelly, let's start with you. I think I would give it a four. It was pretty strong in all of the segments and had some twists and turns and, you know, surprised us. So I thought that was really clever. And uh, I, you know, liked the um, Wizard of Oz reference and Hercules was pretty cool. It reminded me of the Disney Hercules in a lot of ways, but that's funny because that didn't come out for years later, but some of the animation and stuff sort of reminded me of that a little bit, but, mm. uh, but yeah, I enjoyed it. Well, he was blonde. Both of them are kind of like that kind of blondish hair instead of well, the horse, dark brown. Pegasus. Oh yeah. Pegasus. Kind of we forgot a whole thing about Pegasus. I like the landing platform he landed on. that looked like a helicopter landing thing in, in Mount mm-hmm. Olympus. Thought that was pretty cool. Um, okay. So four water towers, uh, Nathan, what about you? I'm going to give it three and a half water towers, because why not? No, uh, <laughs> uh, I uh, I enjoyed all the segments. I don't think any of them like blew me away. I really I really like the uh, Mindy and Buttons. I think that was really good. It's one of the stronger Mindy and Buttons, um, for sure. But the Pinky and the Brain, was a, it just seemed kind of all over the place at times, and it kind of confused me, I think. But uh, overall, it was, it was a good episode, uh, three and a half okay. water towers. Well, I was going to give it three, but I'm, I'll bump it up to three and a half as well. I think, yeah, the, the Mindy and Buttons especially was um, was one of the better Mindy and Buttons I think we've seen so far on our discussions. And I think just the, the fact that they did do something so out of the box is is really interesting. I think it's... It, it, I don't. I can't think of any other cartoon that just did what this cartoon did. Not once, but twice. <laughs> so mm-hmm. uh, I gotta admire the the writers for doing that in this uh, cartoon. So the, you know, good job there. Well, uh, that'll do it for today's episode. But let's go ahead and get to some contact information. Nathan, where can people get in contact with you online? Oh boy, um, Twitter. That's right. Um, I'm on Twitter, Joey. Uh, Django FT, that's me. All right. And Kelly, what about you? I'm also on Twitter at Yoda Princess, Y O D A P R N C S S. Or you can email me, Kelly, at bigshinyrobot.com. Right. And as for the Animaniacast, we're on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And you can always email us, at which is animaniacast at retrozap.com. You can share in your thoughts of episodes. You can also share some thoughts about. Rob Paulson, about if you uh, want to join in with the segment of Rob Paulson is one of the nicest people on earth, go ahead and send us that email, animaniacast at retrozap.com. And uh, speaking of retrozap.com, you can head on over there and see a bunch of different podcasts, videos, and articles every single day. It's a great resource for every single one of your pop culture interests. In fact, a great way to keep in, you know, keep up to date with all of that is simply go to itunes or your favorite podcast player of choice and s- simply subscribe to the retro zap feed and you can get every single one of the podcasts delivered straight to your device for free there's 21 possibly even 22 podcasts right now so that's a that's a lot of bang for your buck especially because that buck is zero so <laughs> gotta go with that With that, I think it's time to wrap things up. So, for Nathan and Kelly, this is Joey saying good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. For reals. For reals. (laughs) This podcast is not endorsed by Warner Brothers or Amblin Entertainment and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Animaniacs, the Warner Brothers logo, all names, pictures, and sounds of the Animaniacs characters or any other Animaniacs related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Warner Brothers, Amblin Entertainment, or their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of the Animaniacs unless otherwise indicated. Ooh, enchanted manure!
of the 70s and 80s are all grown up, but the good times of childhood don't have to end. Our generation can share the fun and fandom of our youth with the next generation and bring the past into the future. And wrap it all up to make a fantastic present. Join Jedi Schwar and Shaz Bazaar every Monday morning to get your work week started by reminiscing about the past and exploring the future with your earbuds on Techno Retro Dads. So find us on iTunes, Facebook, Twitter, or on RetroZap.com. Part of the RetroZap Network.